let me know of you guys who has driven the car before what you think of it because that's I mean I can tell you a lot of it but there's been like many many people who drove it and I'm more curious to hear about your opinions good morning comrades welcome back to the channel welcome back to the Nürburgring and today we will be doing a lap and something very special and unique and before we're going onto the track and I'll be telling you more about the car first of course a mandatory thank you to the channel members for supporting the channel but I want to do a quick walk around around the car this is a BMW 218 we've done a couple of mods to it so most importantly JRZ RS1 suspension pro track wheels Nankang NS2R tires 225 40 18 and performance brakes all around because stock the car comes with some extremely microscopic brakes which were really not keeping up with the job so now M performance the same brakes you will find on the M4 and the M2 also on the front 225 40 18 so it's a square setup and underneath since it's a 218 we'll find a very cute small three-cylinder engine which stock was producing around 135 I think horsepower now it's remapped optimized close to 200 together with Wagner intercooler to be able to keep up with all the extra heat of course generating from it and as mentioned also the JRZ RS Pro uh, RS1 I'm sorry suspension adjustable camber adjustable and one-way adjustable so let's hop in and talk a bit more about the car all right, welcome on to the, well, you already know it, Nürburgring Nordschleife, Tristan Fahrten. Welcome in the BMW 218. Now, I already ran you through the specs, but this car is pretty special. Although you will probably maybe find one, maybe two videos on my channel when I'm driving with this car. The last video I made with this car was the very first lap of 2020 obviously last year so more than a year ago and after that I was kind of not really bothered to to drive it because let's be honest I mean this car is far from being exciting to feature on the channel you can barely hear it it takes quite some time well we made it to 100 kilometers per hour before the bridge I think that's quite an achievement but I just want to say I have access to more exciting cars to feature on my channel however I'm spending more time in this car than on any other car well, per year probably because I'm on the passenger seat. Now the funny story with this and the reason for that is although it is when you think about it is probably the most least exciting sorry not the most but the least exciting BMW when it comes to the 2 Series in their offering I think maybe there is a 216 I don't even know if they still have the 216 but 220 is better 228 is a lot better 235 to 40 and then of course the M2 itself but this shouldn't be that exciting and then again you have lots of other options that you could take on the Nuevo Krinochleife but people come look at the offerings and they're like hmm I need to have a manual car I need to have a rural driven car and I'm also a big BMW fan and then they end up driving this pretty slow but hey they're happy so whatever you know the best part about this car however is because as you have seen the amount of mods is like far from being traditional when it comes to you have quite some handling mods the brakes that you would find on the same cars as the BMW M2 and M4 uh, cars with more than twice the horsepower than this car has but this car has twice little amount of horsepower so what it makes this car what I like about it is that it's extremely safe to drive you can basically brake tomorrow and the car will stop yesterday I don't even know if I should be braking at foot butts here I mean I touch the brake out of habit because like yeah first lap getting used to the car getting used to everything but we just took the corner pretty much flat out and what makes this car fun to drive is that it is a momentum car you can be doing quite significant speeds I will keep it in fourth even through Schwedenkreuz because yeah we have six gear but I don't think it's necessary but yeah it's it makes it challenging to drive that just like to you can achieve quite some high speeds but oh you already someone spilled some gravel here uh, and that's exactly the challenge and the fun of it I wouldn't say challenge it's, it's the fun of it and the reason why I took this car out now I'm gonna let this E36 pass because a lot of cars are a lot faster and just let the fast uh, traffic pass the reason why I took it is because recently I drove the Norwegian Team Shermer M2 and I'm like, 
this is a completely different spectrum. This car is significantly, I would say, well, slower, but it's still a two series. Now let's kind of more or less compare them to, I mean, like not in the literal sense, but you, you get what I mean. So as you can see so far, we're still having lots and lots of fun. And the best part about it is again, not only the safety mods, such as the brakes, and I think the GoPro stopped recording the main one, the, the one facing me, so we're gonna have that issue. So I'm, I'm sorry if you don't see me, but hopefully the speedometer is there and you can see that we're doing still 140 through Metzgesfeld. So what I wanna refer to is that not only braking is very safe with this car, but also the suspension, which makes it a, like a really evolving driver's car. So we can really go close to the curb here and already flat out way before and you don't hear the engine because, yeah, it's a, <laughs> this car was not made for racing or whatever. So this is like one of the downsides of the car, unlike the GT3 RS or the Audi RA that will be passing us in a second. Yeah, that's a that's a nice engine, nice nice engine mode. And we have here a speed limit in bright shade anyway, so we will slow down slightly, but. I do like it. It is like every time, like I, as mentioned previously, I don't actively choose to get in this car because it's like not the most exciting car to drive. But every time I do get to drive it, it's really, it does put a big smile on my face. So, um, since the GoPro died, this is really annoying. And this, I don't know, I will just keep mentioning it. And this has to do with the fact that it just sometimes doesn't like the SD card. And then, but it doesn't tell you in advance, like it's faulty or something. Just like, nope, it's it's not good. But yeah, in any case, we are already going through Loud Links, approaching Bergwerk. That's a corner where you should be breaking for, but yeah, very nice to take it flat out already at the apex, at the curbstone, using all of the track. And if there is not going to be any traffic here, we will stay completely on the left side to minimize the turning radius. Not even gonna be moving over to the right through Kesselschen for a left. So this, we're minimizing the track surface that we need to cover. <laughs> completely wrong line, but <laughs> this is what I was been taught during my um, uh, Nordschleife permit course in 2017, that if you have a slow powered car, minimize the track surface you need to cover and since you're driving pretty slow hmm, okay we're just gonna lift through mud curve and not even brake and then on the gas again going smoothly to the outside and the car will actually even like start start dropping speed by itself <laughs> right approaching star striker one of the few hard braking points that we have but with this car again no problem could have braked a lot later and fall on the gas flat out and off we go yeah I forgot to say in the intro I'll probably include it separately let me know of you guys who has driven the car before what you think of it because that's I mean I can tell you a lot of it but there's been like many many people who drove it and I'm more curious to hear about your opinions how did you like it? Did you remember it? Was it was like your first ever car you drove on the Nürburgring. It's, um, it's for me and other people also a lot more valuable to hear your opinion, I would say. Also here through Hohacht, almost not going on the brakes, just keeping it flat. <laughs> Braking slightly towards Hohacht. Should also even downshift. That's the, the issue with this gearbox because it's not made to be a track car or a sports car. It's made for fuel economy, so the gearings are pretty like long. And we're approaching like the Sirocco race car here. Ole! Nice, nice display he has. GLP, which is like the, the racing series on the Nürburgring. Not my favorite line to take, to overtake here, but uh, yeah. <laughs> You can also do lots of left foot braking here because we just keep it to pretty much the whole track you can do in third gear. Which again, you don't have to shift much. And if you have to shift, the car has also the rev match, the auto blip, which you don't need to turn on because it's just already automatically turned on by itself. 
flat, 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 <laughs> keeping it flat. <laughs> and the car pulls, pulls, pulls. I mean, I would almost say she will break after the jump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if the GoPro indeed stopped recording because of its typical GoPro nonsense, then it's, I'm very sad that you cannot see my laughing face and just like smiling from excitement. It's, it's a really nice, nice thing to drive. <laughs> and also here, not even gonna use the fifth gear, just keep it in fourth, brake, and turning in. <laughs> Approaching the end of the lap already, unfortunately. Oh, I think I saw Rebecca from Ring Race Shoot being at the mini carousel, and I hope that uh, she made a very nice picture of me dipping it into the mini K. So, that's pretty much it. The end of the lap. I hope you guys enjoyed, I definitely have and I can say that I'll probably be taking this car more often out because it's just, it's fun to drive. It's a, I wouldn't say it's a dream to drive, but if you know the track, if you know what to do, when to do, how to do, it's, uh, it brings out the best in you because it's about being a driver and uh, yeah, the car is there to keep you safe in this case. It's, it's a lot and lot and lots of fun. And as we can see, the car has covered already over 60,000 kilometers. A majority of it is on the Nürburgring Nordschleife, just like the license plate of the 997 GT3 RS in front of us. I hope you can see it on the GoPro, but it says Nordschleife. <laughs> right, uh, thanks for watching, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time in tomorrow's video when I don't know what we will be doing. Hopefully the GoPro will be recording, but if someone works at GoPro, Fix your shit. This is annoying. Luckily, we have three cameras and only one stops working, but uh, imagine if it's the main one facing outside. So, basically, look at this. Fully jammed at 2 minutes 10. And just to say that I'm frustrated, it's like saying nothing at all. What basically happens, it's just all, all over randomly sudden, GoPro stops liking the SD card that is being in it. And it's not notifying you that it's like, oh, wrong SD card or wrong format or whatnot. It just records and sometimes it doesn't. And the only way to solve it is just like when you see that once it doesn't record, you need to replace the SD card. But sometimes it's a very special video. Repairing your file. I think the file is way beyond repair, bro. No, I don't think it happened. I really doubt that it has... Yeah, only until t 2 minutes 8. Well, at least I got to do my introduction. That's good.